What I want to do and what I will do is you graduate from a college. I think you should get automatically as part of your diploma a green card to be able to stay in this country. And that includes junior oh. colleges, too. Anybody graduates from a college, you go in there for two years or four years. If you graduate or you get a doctorate degree from a college, you should be able to stay in this country. Donald Trump seemed to soften his stance on immigration while speaking to some of his Silicon Valley donors. This was on David Sachs's All In podcast. Now, Silicon Valley execs, like Sachs, by the way, want to expand these visa programs in order to bring in skilled labor that they can take full advantage of here in the United States. Trump even said he supported the idea of giving these undocumented immigrants, well, they would come here on a visa, green cards after they graduate from college, which you'll soon see didn't sit too well with his base. We're gonna get to his base in just a moment. But before we do, let's get to more context in this conversation. So Trump was responding to a comment from one of the hosts, Jason, Calicanis, who said the following, we need high skilled workers in this country. I mean, I don't know why Americans can't be considered high skilled workers, we could train them. But Americans might actually have higher demands when it comes to salaries, let's just keep that in mind. But he noted that three of the four hosts on the podcast are immigrants. And then he asked Trump, can you please promise us you will give us more ability to import the best and brightest around the world to America? Which prompted Trump's green card response, let's hear more. You know more stories than I do, but I know of stories where People graduated from a top college or from a college, and they desperately wanted to stay here. They had a plan for a company, a concept, and they can't. They go back to India, they go back to China. They do the same basic company in those places, and they become multi-billionaires employing thousands and thousands of people, and it could have been done here. And a bigger example is you, they, they, you need a pool of people to work for your companies. You have great companies, and they have to be smart people. Not everybody can be... Uh, less than smart, you need brilliant people. And we force the brilliant people, the people that graduate from college, the people that are number one in their class from the best colleges, you have to be able to recruit these people and keep the people. It was such a big deal. Somebody graduates at the top of the class, they can't even make a deal with the company because they don't think they're gonna be able to stay in the country. That is gonna end on day one. That's fantastic. Thanks for watching, our audience has helped build TYT into the media giant it is today. Together, we can accomplish anything. Support our work and join us at tyt.com slash team. Now make no mistake about it, Donald Trump softening his messaging on immigration has to do with the fact that he is willing to be anything to anyone as long as the check clears. And to be sure, he was sitting there having a conversation with his Silicon Valley donors, including David Sachs, who recently held a fundraiser for Trump in San Francisco. This took place earlier this month with the goal of raising $12 million. The tickets that cost $50,000 or $30,000 had sold out. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that they hit their fundraising goal. But this is just, I mean, this is what politics is. You know, Donald Trump at least understood that Americans are sick of corruption. So in 2016, he declared that he's gonna drain the swamp. And that message resonated with people who believed him. But maybe reconsider believing him when you take a look at what he's willing to say, depending on who he's in front of and depending on how much money they gave his campaign. So Charlemagne, complicated issue, Trump you know, now all of a sudden saying he's in favor of immigrants as long as they graduate from Harvard or something along those lines. The, uh, the Republican governors started busing them to blue cities. And then it started in terms of immigrants in general. And then that started creating some issues in the inner cities. So this was a tough issue to deal with. What's your, what's your take on how Trump is dealing with it and how Biden is dealing with it? Well, you know, you made a good point just now about how Donald Trump will say whatever he needs to say, depending on who he's in front of mm -hmm. and why that works so well is because if you're in a debate, if you're arguing about what Trump said or what he didn't say, you can Google anything and it could come up. You could say, you could Google Trump being against immigrants and you could Google Trump being 
for immigrants, for him calling for, you know, calling to, to give them green cards, you know, the immigrant graduates. So it's actually a, a, a interesting tactic in this world that we live in now, because you, like I said, you can literally Google, you know, something to reinforce whatever point it is you're trying to make. Um, but as far as the immigration thing is, man, the immigration, it's, it's interesting, right? Because I feel like, you know, we're in dream selling season, you know, because it's a presidential election year. So I really don't, listen to any of these things that they're saying because the immigration issue to me is just another example of how America does not know how to solve problems because we politicize everything. Democrats are willing to you know, work with Republicans, but Republicans don't wanna do it because they don't want Democrats to get the credit. You know, Donald Trump even told Republicans, you know, for, for the border, you know, wait until I get back in office if he gets back in back in office. And then, you know, Democrats for the longest time tried to weaponize the border, you know, against Republicans. And I would say kind of downplayed the crisis at the border. You know, now it's an even bigger issue. And who gets hurt by this the most is the American people. You know, because like I said earlier, elected officials care more about, you know, the needs of their party than they do the needs of the people. And that's the problem with American politics. They got mad at me. You know, and when I say they, I'm talking about left media uh, in January. Because I was doing an interview with uh, Fox News Digital and you know the, 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 the guy Joseph over there, he asked me, do I think the border is going to be an issue? And I said, yeah. And the reason I said, yeah, because the first time, for the first time in my life, I saw people you know, from my community, the black community complaining about the border. You know, whether it was you know, activists in Chicago who were c- complaining about you know, um, you know, immigrants coming over and getting more resources than homeless people are getting more resources than poor and disenfranchised people on the south side. Whether it was New York City when Mayor Eric Adams, um, you know, made kids stay home for a day to do remote learning because he housed, you know, um, the, the, the immigrants. Whether it's a, a, a parking attendant, and this is a true story, a parking attendant coming up to me in tears, wanting me to come to his neighborhood to see what is going on in his community because of gangs that have come over from the border. So when I started talking about this, these are these are conversations that I'm hearing from the people. These are people that I'm meeting in the street, people calling the radio station complaining. When I started having these conversations and saying these things, and when I said that in that interview, man, MSNBC ran a headline that says Charlemagne the God is spreading MAGA messaging. No. This was in January. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm like, you say no damn yeah. MAGA messaging? I'm, this is black activists in Chicago and a brown parking attendant and yeah. people, black people calling, you know, the complain about, you know, their kids having to stay home for the day to do remote learning because of the because they put immigrants in the school. So I'm like, how is that MAGA messaging? Now you fast forward, it's June and the border is like one of the biggest issues. You know, you know, if if, yeah. if I think when I last look and uh, the voter said it was like a top two, top three issue. You know, for them. Charlemagne. So it's just like we got to stop looking at these things as you know, you know, put put put. Uh, we got to stop politicizing these things and just start listening to the people. If you listen to actual everyday working class people, you will see what they care about. And you know, the border is definitely an issue. Thank you for saying that. And look, the allegations, the smears alleging that you're just trying to spread MAGA talking points, is meant to put. It is meant to silence you so you stop criticizing or critiquing the failures of the Democratic Party. And make no mistake about it, the Biden administration has ignored that issue. You're completely right about that. And I love the fact that you say listen to the people because that's what I do in my research. So I watch the city council meetings where the local community in Chicago is speaking out and they're talking about sure. the unjust nature of them being nickeled and dimed by their local government and by the federal government, let's keep it real. While all these resources at this point to the tune of $400 million in local resources goes toward an issue that the federal government has essentially neglected until it became a political liability for them. And so I, that's I watch, why I respect I what you do because you tell the truth and don't let them you know, try to censor you with their ridiculous smears. I don't think you're you know, pro MAGA at all. I think Nobody, you're just telling that's the truth. nuts, that's yeah. totally nuts. I, I, I watch those Chicago council meetings all the time. I have a good friend, uh, her name is Zoe. Zoe and and she 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 goes to those meetings all the time and raises hell mm-hmm. in Chicago. I repost her and everything, and that's what I I've, I've even told people in the Democratic Party: go to Chicago, you know, go to Boston. Like when you see 
these people complaining. These people are your constituents. Don't just chalk it up to, you know, noise on social media. Like, no, these are people that are really in the street, really going to these city council meetings, you know, raising hell about what's going on. So why not go talk to them? Go on the front lines with these people. Because one thing that I hate that politicians do, you know, they talk about the people they should be talking to. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and you look, this is how mainstream media loses all credibility. When they uh, take someone like Charlemagne or us and they claim that we're pro Trump or pro MAGA, all of our audiences, not insignificant audiences, know exactly who we are. So then they're, that's just mainstream media saying, oh, we're lying. And now you can just tell that you're, you're, we're lying. Because look at what we made up about Charlemagne or, or Jank or Anna, et cetera. All right, thank you for joining us, Charlemagne. Really appreciate it. Uh, everybody check out Charlemagne the God, of course. On his on uh, Breakfast Club, and now uh, most importantly, get honest or die lying. Uh, why small talk sucks, which is also a funny part of the the book. Uh, Charlemagne the God, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate. It. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. I really love what y'all do um, on the Young Turks, man. And it's just it's just it's a very refreshing, you know, voice. You know, y'all don't lean to one side. Y'all are very. I tell people all the time, if this is a, if you want to go really hear what's going on honestly in, in, in our society, you should tune in uh, to the Young Turks. Thank you, Charlemagne. We appreciate that. That's awesome. Really appreciate Absolutely. it, brother. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us. Become a Young Turk.